you, Brother Dalton. Thanks for that truth as well and that ministry and song. If you have your Bibles, open to the book of Proverbs, chapter number 4. Proverbs, chapter number 4. Great to see so many folks here today and joining us online as well. Thank you again for that. And happy Father's Day. And to those who have their fathers present, what a blessing. My, my father is here. My wife's father is in heaven today. And so a special day for us. I had a few things I wanted to say to my father this morning. Four statements to my father, and you can all be witnesses of those statements. Um, to Dad, I want to tell you, my dad's sitting over there. I want to tell you, Dad, that I love how we don't even need to say, Dad, out loud how I'm your favorite child. It's really a special bond that we share. I smile because you're my father. I laugh because there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Dad, I was going to give you the most amazing gift ever. And then I remembered you already have me. <laughs> Truly blessed. And Dad, you've always, you always have been my favorite ATM. You may remember a few weeks back that I talked about this in church, how the difference between my sister and I in life, those of you who may remember this, I'll remind you, those who don't, that growing up, it felt at times if I'd asked my father for a dollar, uh, he would give me four quarters and tell me to bring back the change. I'd go on to explain it with my sister, he, she'd ask my father, it felt like, it felt like, for a dollar, he'd hand her a 20 and say, have a nice day. Remember, that was at the point of some point in my sermon, I don't remember now what the point was, it doesn't particularly matter. My father, the joker that he is, that night, or that, I think it was Sunday morning, that afternoon, gave me an envelope with a $20 bill that said, keep the change. <laughs> so now I can no longer use that illustration, I guess, or with a caveat. One little boy asked, when asked to explain about Father's Day, he said it this way, it's just like Mother's Day, only you don't have to spend as much on the present. <laughs> it's probably true, and maybe you saw those memes online, Mother's Day, there are ring commercials for $3,000, have you seen this? Father's Day that you see the target, the target added for cargo shorts for $11. That's the difference between mothers and Father's Day. And then last of this morning, uh, the story goes, my son was in the lunchroom at school with two friends, and they were bragging about their fathers. The first boy, Matt, said, well, my dad scribbles a few words on a piece of paper, calls it a poem, and they give him $100 for it. The second boy said, well, that's nothing. My dad scribbles a few circles on a piece of paper, they call it a song, and they give him $1,000 for it. The third boy said, well, that's nothing at all. My father scribbles a few words on a piece of paper. He talks about it, calls it a sermon, and it takes 12 guys to get all the money up for it. <laughs> well, here we are this morning, First Baptist Church, Father's Day. What do you preach on Father's Day? It's a question I posed to myself and asked, Lord, Lord, where would you have us to go this Sunday morning on Father's Day? So many wonderful examples of fathers in Scripture. There's, of course, a correlation between our Heavenly Father and Earthly Fathers. God is the, the best father anyone could have. He is the father to the fatherless. All right? He is wonderful. This morning, I'd like to turn to Proverbs chapter number 4. I'm entitled, The Message of Father's Advice. Proverbs chapter 4 of Father's Advice. Your dad probably gave you a lot of advice. Some you picked up verbally, some non-verbals. Things you should do and shouldn't do. Who knew that if your dad's working on the, in, in the hood that you shouldn't, you shouldn't push the horn? It would not be as nearly as funny as maybe you thought it was. Advice of your father, he lets you know that wasn't a good idea. Like one, one young boy was riding with his father in the car. And the father made an illegal left turn. He said, son, don't ever do that. That was illegal, my bad. And his son said, dad, don't worry about it. The police car behind us did the same thing. That'll catch up to you. Advice from the Father. What kind of advice has your father or fathers have you given? You know, well, maybe some advice in farming, in mechanical work, in house projects, schoolwork, labor, treatment of others. Proverbs chapter 4, we have some words from Solomon with some advice for his son. Some words that I think we would do well to heed to today, and then a challenge for fathers as well inside this passage. The fact is, Solomon is, is the wisest, was the wisest man who ever lived. And now in this book of Proverbs, under inspiration of the Holy Ghost, everything he says is true here. Yet as the wisest man who ever lived, he did not always take his own advice. You know, Solomon, in the book of Proverbs, talked about a wife and women and strange women. Yet he 
had over a thousand women in his life. He didn't take his own advice. He talked about the fear of the Lord, the beginning of wisdom, and yet in his life you can see in the book of Ecclesiastes how without living for God, it's empty, it's vain, it's worthless. The wisest man who ever lived had all of the knowledge and didn't live for God like he ought to. But there's a lesson for us to learn this morning. Proverbs, if you would, in chapter number 4, where he's talking to his son. Beginning in verse number 10, where the Bible says, Hear, my son, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Lord, I thank you for your word, for the time with this morning. Lord, I thank you for all the fathers here this morning. Lord, what a humbling responsibility you give to us as fathers. What a perfect model you are as a heavenly father. Lord, help us this morning as we look at your word and the truth from your word that our hearts would be open, that our ears would be in tune to what you'd have for us. Lord, may we learn and change to be more like your son, Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. Here, Solomon gives some advice to his son. Here, oh my son. Can you kind of picture what's going on? Now, obviously he wrote this down, but I can kind of picture maybe they're on a walk, maybe they're sitting there. But they're having not a conversation. A conversation is when two people talk. This is not a conversation. This would be, young people, a lecture. All right, this would be where we listen and someone else talks. Those are equally as helpful as conversations. Sometimes, young people, sometimes kids, you want to have a conversation when it ought to be a lecture. Adults, sometimes we want to have a conversation with God when it ought to be a lecture. Now, there are times we're supposed to communicate with God. We have the privilege of prayer. That is wonderful. But there are times that we don't need to talk. We need to shut our mouths and open our ears. And here Solomon says, Hear, O my son. I first of all see this morning as a father's advice, an entreaty to listen to wisdom. An entreaty to listen to wisdom. You see, no one can make you and no one can make me listen. You can lock me in a room and lock my arms down and, and play whatever you want to play, but I don't have to listen if I don't want to. I may hear it, but I may not be listening. We see this duplicated in the Howell House on a regular basis. Things that are heard are not heard. How is that possible? I don't ever remember being at that stage in my life. <laughs> don't talk to my parents after the service because they may not tell you the whole truth. You know, we can hear and not listen. And we can hear from God, hear wisdom, and not listen. So, Pastor, I'm in church on a Sunday morning. I'm on live stream on a Sunday morning. Of course I'm listening. No, 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 no. You may be hearing but not listening. The first thing, though, he says to say is to hear it. Hear, O oh my son. Be in tune with it. Be open to learning. Listen to wisdom and seek wisdom. If we took the time, we could go back to chapter number two of Proverbs, where Solomon really entreats his son to search after wisdom like a hid treasure, to seek after it, to find it. I believe there are eight action verbs in those first few verses about seeking wisdom, but trying to hear it. In the multitude of counselors, there is safety an entreaty to listen. You want some Father's Day advice? Listen to wisdom. Hear some wisdom. Yes. Go to the place where you can hear wisdom. You know that when you come to church, I'm going to try to preach from the Bible, it's going to be different than, than what you hear on TV besides 8.30 to 9 on Sunday mornings. It's going to be different, different philosophy because the Bible wisdom is different than earthly wisdom. James tells us that wisdom that is from above is first peaceable then gentle, easy to be entreated. That, that is wisdom that's from above. Go to the places where you can find wisdom. Some people want to ask for advice only from people that will agree with them. Have you ever met someone like this? They ask you a question. When you give them an answer, wisdom, they argue with you? Come on. Now, how irritating is that? 
I don't ever remember doing that either as a child. My memory is going, you pray for me. Right? Yes, and they ask you a question, well, what should I do here? And you say, well, you would do this, this, and this. And Oh, no, 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 that, that won't work. Well, then don't bother asking me. Don't bother wasting my time. I'm so glad that God is a whole lot more patient than you or I are. Because there's sometimes we ask God, He tells us, well, why don't you do this? Well, God, that's not a good solution. That's not the solution I want to hear. Have patience and have faith and walk by faith. No, no, no. I want to walk by sight. Give me the answer quickly. But there's a seeking for wisdom to hear it. They say that as we age, which I am doing, we can no longer hear certain high-pitched noises as well as when we're in our youth. A few years back on the internet, this, this kind of app and this, uh, this kind of activity went around where there would be different high-pitched frequencies, and depending on how old you were, you could hear it or not hear it. Apparently, 8,000 hertz. Everyone should be able to hear this frequency. If you can't, all right, you're either deaf or may not be alive. Everyone should hear 8,000. At 12,000 hertz, it is hard for anyone over 50 to hear. That doesn't make sense, Pastor Howell. Listen, later on, not now, you can do this, all right? Because if you do it now, you're like, hey, nothing's happening. There'll be people crying on the part of the auditorium, all right? <laughs> and that's why sometimes a hearing aid can just screech a buzz, right? And someone else can't hear, but other people can. 12,000 hertz, anyone over 50, is hard to hear. 15,000 hertz is difficult for anyone over 40 to hear. And 17,400 hertz is a frequency that only people under 18 can hear. Now, I had to try this theory, right? As some of you will later on. Please don't do it now, please. They are very high-pitched screeches, all right? Sure enough, I could hear some of them. I couldn't hear the last one. I knew it was playing. I said, I couldn't hear. I'm not a teenager any longer. Praise God. I am free, free, free. Yes. But because of that, some retailers will actually use a device that plays a pitch at 17,400 hertz, calling it a teenager repellent outside their stores to stop teens from loitering. It makes one think, does it not? <laughs> it may be in the future at first. No, 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 no. I love teenagers going to camp this week. They call it the mosquito teen repeller, and they can install on their property to keep peop young people from congregating. I'm so thankful, though, that this word, this scripture, never produces too high of a frequency for me to gain wisdom from. It never produces too high of a frequency for anyone to gain wisdom from. That's why my daughter, who is seven years old, can read God's word, and she does, and she can gain wisdom from God's word, and she's only seven. And there are folks in here who are 77 who read, who, read, who read God's Word and they gain wisdom as well because of frequency. We can, if we want to, we can tune into it. We can hear it. It can be heard by people of all ages, of all races, at all stages. This book, cross-generational, this book will touch you. Hear it. A father's advice, listen to wisdom. Listen to it. It's not just a place, it's an attitude. But it goes beyond that, the verse goes beyond that, because it's like Solomon might have known his son. It's like a dad might have known, maybe, just maybe, what could go on in a child's mind. If you look back at verse 10, please, where he says, Hear, O my son, and, help me with the next word, receive. Let's try that again. Hear, O my son, and receive. Oh. He didn't want it to go in one ear and write out the other. What good is it if we come to church, if we spend time with God and yet don't receive it? Take it. Make it our own. I found some packaging that had useless instructions. Now, I'm here to tell you, I'll tell you, I'm going with this illustration. God's word is never useless in your life or my life. 
But here's some packaging with some useless instructions on a tiramisu dessert. Do not turn upside down. It was printed on the bottom of the package. <laughs> on the packaging for a Wawenta iron, do not iron clothes on body. I was in college when my roommate was ironing while sitting down. Sitting at a low ironing board, he's ironing his shirt. He had shorts on. He ironed the sleeve and missed the end of the iron. He's sitting there and went right onto the top of his thigh. Sizzling screams. Life changing. Do not iron clothes on body. Here's another one on a kitchen knife. Keep out of children. <laughs> hmm. It's very true. Instructions on an American Airlines packet of peanuts. Open packet, eat nuts. Thank you. Thank you, because I was wondering what to do with this package of peanuts you gave to me. I wasn't sure whether just to throw on the floor, or, but open and eat it. Here we go. This was on a chainsaw in Sweden. Do not attempt to stop chain with your hands. Why is that even a thing? I cut some trees down this past week. So I cut some branches up and I didn't even once think, boy, that chainsaw blade is running. I need to stop. Let me use my left hand. Why is that even a thing? Well, you know why, right? You know why. Because somebody someday said, hey, this thing is running. I need to stop it real quick. I'll just use my fleshly hand because that's stronger than a tree branch. I was a teenager, that's what it was right there. Instructions on a hair dryer, do not use while sleeping. If you can do that, come see me. We can make a lot of money together. Yet God's word never brings useless instructions, does it? It never brings, it never brings useless ideas, it brings help to the weary, it brings strength to those who are weak, it brings wisdom to those who don't have any. This verse number 10, what it says is, Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I summed up that verse in one little phrase. It would almost be a dad joke, but I think it'll help us to remember this phrase. Get it? Got it? Good. Get it? Hear it? Got it? Receive it? Good. You'll be blessed by it. Some Father's Day advice, get it, got it, good, in referring to God's Word. Spend time in God's Word. Love His Word. Love the wisdom from God's Word. Receive it. Take it. Make it your own. And you'll be blessed by it. There's an entreaty to listen to wisdom. But there's also, in the next few verses, an encouragement, dads, to communicate wisdom. Will you look at me, please, in verse number 11, where he says, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. If I can for a moment listen or, or, or encourage our fathers for a moment, though this has a broader application to all of us as Christians, old or young. Solomon could say at this point he is teaching wisdom. Though he didn't always take his own advice and counsel, he wanted to communicate wisdom to his son. The reality is that we have a responsibility as dads, but as Christians in a greater sense, to communicate wisdom. We don't have this wisdom just for us, though it will benefit us. Get it? Got it? Good. Days of your life will be many. It's not just for you. It's not just for me. It's to communicate. And there's an encouragement to communicate wisdom, to declare wisdom. I have taught you in wisdom. It's different than knowledge and different than understanding. Knowledge is knowing the scripture, being able to quote verses. Ephesians 4, 32, and be kind one to another. That's knowledge. Understanding is the, the point that I understand the meaning of that, of that, of that verse. Be ye kind one to another. That means I'm going to show Christ-like kindness to those around me. That's knowledge and understanding, but wisdom. Wisdom is the last step. Wisdom is actually doing what we know and understand. Wisdom is always linked to action in Scripture. The fear of the Lord, uh, my response to him, is the beginning of wisdom. Beginning of right actions is, the correct actions is me fearing God properly in my life. All right, a reference toward him. 
So there's a, a, there's a declaration to declare wisdom. Dads, for a moment, dads, make sure we teach wisdom to our kids. Not just everything else. So your son can rebuild the engine with his eyes closed. And he doesn't know how to communicate God's word. So who cares? So your daughter can shoot a deer at 65 yards in pitch black. But you've never showed her from scripture wisdom how to be a godly woman. You've missed the mark. Communicate wisdom. You know how to drive a car, but you can't drive your life. Communicate wisdom. What values as a dad are you communicating? Hopefully you're communicating wise values, showing that money is just a tool in the hand all right, of the Father. Just a tool. I'm supposed to be a good steward of it. It's for His glory. That's wisdom. Showing what true love looks like. That's wisdom. Showing what a godly father looks like. That, that's wisdom. Mom and dad, young person, the greatest gift that you can give someone else is time with God every day. The greatest gift you can give someone else is time with God every day. If you spend time with God, He'll change you. He'll make you like His Son, Jesus Christ. It'll affect every relationship you have. You see, I can be a jerk sometimes. Believe it or not. Don't say amen, Brother Kemp. Because you're too close. Don't ask my parents on that one, please. They'll tell you the whole truth on that. You know what helps me not to be a jerk? Come on now, right here. Some of you can be a jerk too sometimes. It's called our flesh. Come on. Young people, old people alike. I'm not alone in here. I'm preaching to myself. But yeah, you know what helps us not to be that way? God's Word. Sometimes I can be selfish. I guess this confession is good for the soul, right? You know what tells me not to be selfish? This. And my wife and kids, in case you're wondering. <laughs> this right here. You know why we apologize? Because of this book right here. You know why I live for God? Because of this book. The greatest gift you can give is, is time in God's Word. Hey, parents, do your kids ever see you spend time with God? Do they ever see you spend time with God? You ought to, but do they ever see you spend time with God? I hope that they do. Declare wisdom. Kids were asked... What their dads always say. What would your kids say if they were asked that? I don't think I want to know. But these kids were asked. I'm glad for them. Kendra, age 15. My dad always says, I love you. Whew, right? Matthew, age 13. Be nice. Sebastian, age 17. I'm proud of you. Shyla, age 13, wake up, time for Devos. Zoe, age 5, funny stuff, sometimes. <laughs> Beckett, age 2, no, he tells me no. <laughs> when I go to time out in the dark and cry. Audrey, age seven, remember that I will always love you even when you don't see me. Aaron, age 16, to have fun, be safe, and make wise decisions. Lucy, age 11, unicorns live in San Diego. <laughs> Sarah, age seven, I'm his pretty princess. And Cameron, age seven, did you know I love you? What would your kids say if you were asked, what do you always say, dads? Hopefully, something from God's word would come out at some point. Amen. Wisdom, declare wisdom. Amen. It's wisdom from above. I talking to a parent one time years and years ago. The kid was having a rough time in school. The parents said, well, I told them next time that happens, they better take care of themselves. It's funny, because I look at God's Word, I never find that particular advice in here. I've looked for it. I do find things like, walk like Jesus, Amen. turn the other cheek, yes. love selflessly. 
I love those times when a parent says, well, listen, I've told my kids we're going to pray for that person. That's wisdom. There's an encouragement to communicate wisdom. Not only to declare it, but I see here to display it. That's what Solomon says. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. It's not enough just to say it. He says, I've instructed you and you can imitate me. Example for all of us. That we ought to be an example. I'll give you wisdom and you can follow me. That's what Paul said. Follow me as I follow Christ. We will never be perfect, but that ought to be something we can say. If your kids, if your kids are closer to God than you are, then it's time to step it up. It's time to step it up. If your kids enjoy church more than you do, then shame on you. I love coming to church. I was driving to church this morning. I'm getting ahead of myself now. I'm driving to church this morning, and I passed the golf course. There was someone chipping onto the green. It was a terrible chip. He chipped right as I passed him. And it hit the ground about 20 yards in front of the green. Poor guy. There's hole number two there. You know, Stephen Green Acres, there are two guys teeing off, or three guys teeing off on hole number two. And I thought, too bad. Too bad that the best thing they have in their life on a Sunday morning is to play golf. I get to go to church. I get to go to church. Display wisdom. Men, we need to lead the charge in spirituality and godliness and humility. The pressure is on. This is no game for the faint at heart. There is an encouragement to communicate wisdom. And last this morning, I see an end to wisdom. See, Solomon gives an entreaty, an encouragement to us. But last of all, he says this in verses 12 and 13. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. When thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go, for she is thy life. You see, this is a discovery of how life is supposed to be. Life is bigger than what we see. He tells us two things, I believe, in this passage. passage. First of all, he says that when you follow wisdom, life will be free of unnecessary problems. It doesn't mean that life will always be peachy, that there will be no problems. Jesus tells us that. But there will be unnecessary problems when you don't follow wisdom. When you follow your own path, you create more problems. And Solomon says your steps, steps are not straightened. Or what that means is they're not in distress. You won't be stumbling or wavering. And you'll be free of unnecessary purposelessness. This is the best life, for she is thy life. And yet Solomon, just a few years later, says all is vanity. Solomon missed his own wisdom. This is the life. This is what life is about, about following wisdom, which means following the Lord. Living for life for God brings meaning, direction, and motivation. My kids may or may not make a lot of money, but I hope they live for God. Hope they're successful, not in the world's economy, but I hope they're successful in God's economy. Last time I checked, he pays a whole lot better than Apple does. His stock is a whole lot better than Amazon, and his benefit is a whole lot better than any pension you can still find out there today. Pray that my kids are successful in God's economy. That's what Solomon says, for she, wisdom, is thy life. You want purposefulness in your life? You want purpose in your life? Then live for wisdom. Yet we miss the purpose sometimes. A rich man was determined to give his mother a birthday present that, she, that would outshine all the others. So he found a bird that had a vocabulary of 4,000 words. This bird could speak in numerous languages and sing three operatic arias. He immediately bought bought the bird for $50,000 and had it delivered to his mother. The next day he phoned her, asked if she'd received the bird. What did you think of the bird, Mom? It was delicious, was her reply. (laughs) Yet if we don't follow wisdom, we'll miss the purpose. Billy Sunday said this, more men fail through lack of purpose than lack of talent. And one of the top cartoonists of the nation 
left this note penned to his pillow after he took his life. This was what the note said, I have had few difficulties, many friends and great successes. I have gone from wife to wife, from house to house, visited great countries of the world, but now I am fed up with inventing devices to fill up 24 hours of the day. By the world's economy, he was successful. He had purpose. He was rich and famous. He had inside, empty. Solomon says, here, O oh my son, receive the instruction. Take it, get it, got it, good. He said, I've taught you wisdom. I've demonstrated it. Now listen, if you follow it, your life will be free from unnecessary hardships, problems, and you're going to have a purpose. That purpose will have greater meaning than anything else you can do. For she is thy life. Amen. So, are you listening to wisdom today? You trying to gain it? Are you communicating with wisdom today? And are you living wisdom today? Lord, I thank you for your word, for the wisdom that you bring. Lord, I thank you for this particular passage of scripture. We find a challenge, an exhortation, Lord, and purpose in our life. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. There may be some folks here today who need to tune back into your wisdom. Or there may be some adults or some kids who need to start communicating wisdom. And Lord, there may be someone here who needs some purpose in life. Lord, help us to be sensitive to your Holy Spirit. Now their heads bowed and our eyes closed. I wonder if there's someone here this morning who said, Pastor, as you spoke, God was speaking to me. Pastor, would you pray for me when you pray in just a moment? I need to have that purpose. I need to communicate that wisdom. As you spoke, God spoke to me. Would you pray for me when you pray in just a moment? Would you slip your hand up, slip back down? I'll acknowledge it. Amen. 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 No one else. I wonder if you're here this morning or if you've joined us online. And you're not sure that you're on your way to heaven. You've never trusted Christ as your Savior. Would you do me a favor? Could I pray for you when I pray for the others? Who would say, Pastor, I'll slip my hand up. I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven. I'd like to be sure. Would you pray for me when you pray for the others? I'll call no more attention to you than I did anyone else. Just slip your hand back up, slip back down. I'll see acknowledge you. Say, Pastor, that's me. I, I'm not sure I'm on my way to heaven, but I'd like to be sure. Would you pray for me when you pray for the others? Maybe you joined us online. You never trusted Christ. We'd love to communicate that truth to you, how that God loves you and Jesus died for you. There'll be a number on the screen. And if you want to know how to trust Christ as your Savior, would you call that number, email that address right there? We'll have someone contact you and open the Bible and show you how you could know for sure you're on your way to heaven. We'd love to let you know that. Lord, bless this time of invitation. Lord, those who indicated that you've touched their hearts, Lord, may they respond to you. And I pray for anyone who is not sure they're on their way to heaven. They never trusted Christ and his shed blood on the cross. Lord, would you help them to understand the gospel today? In Jesus' name, amen. As we stand to our feet, the piano is already playing. Lord, touch your heart. The altar's open. You do business with God.